Hey everyone, welcome to your second C++ Qt game making tutorial. We're going to leave off, um, we're going to start picking up where we left off in the previous tutorial. And if you remember, in the previous tutorial, we just made a Q graphics rect item. We put it inside of a Q graphics scene, and we visualized that scene using a Q graphics view. Now the goal for this tutorial is to um, make this rectangle move in response to the user pressing the arrow keys. In this process, we're going to learn about a few topics. The first thing we're going to learn about are events. An event is anything important that happens during the, uh, the lifetime of your application. So for example, if the user clicks the mouse or presses a key. In this tutorial, we're going to talk about key press events specifically. Now when the user presses a key, um, you have to know at least one bit of information about that event. And that's where the queue key event object comes in. This object stores information about that event. In the case of a key press event, it will tell you what key was pressed. The event propagation system um, basically describes um, like the order in which the event is passed around. So basically, when an event such as a key press occurs, which object receives this event first? And who does it pass it to? And when do we know when the event has been handled? so we can stop passing it around. I'll go over this a little bit at the very end of this video. We're also going to learn about a very useful um, header file called QDebug, and you can use this header file to print out messages into the console um, just to test your code or to help you debug. Okay, um, so if you recall, again, our goal is to get that rectangle to move when the user presses the arrow keys. Now that rectangle is a QGraphics rect item. It has a lot of properties that we like. We like that it, uh, it has the capability to go inside a scene, and we like that it has the capability to represent a rectangle. But we just want it to have the ability to respond to keyboard events. So my plan is to basically create my own custom class, and I want it to derive from the QGraphics rect item. So I get all of its good properties, and plus, I will add the ability to respond to keyboard events. So go ahead and add a new um, header file. I'm going to call it myrect. Um, now add a new source file. Also going to call it myrect. And um, we're going to have to include QGraphics rect item because this is what we're inheriting from. Okay, and we're only going to have to basically define one member function. It's called key press event, and it takes a Q key event pointer as an argument. Okay, so um, when this member function will allow this object, the myrect object, to respond to the keyboard being pressed. Um, there's a little uh, trick that you can do um, if you have declared your member function and you have a source file for your class, you can right click the member function name, go over refactor and click add definition. And this will add skeleton code in the definition file so you don't have to. So this is the definition file. We're going to include the header. And this is the member function that gets called in response to keys being pressed. Um, so we're going to quickly demonstrate the usefulness of the QDebug library. And right now, we're just going to um, print out a message uh, when the key is pressed. So you do lowercase q, uppercase d, q debug, then you pass the text. We're just going to say, um, my rect knows that you pressed a key. <clears throat> OK, so let's go to main. And let's go ahead and replace that. Um, uh, Q graphics rect item that we had in tutorial one with a custom my rect. And let's do it here too. Okay, so we didn't change anything else. We just changed that Q graphics rect into our own custom rect that is capable of responding to uh, key events. So let's run this and see if indeed our rect responds to key events. Whenever you get this unresolved external symbol right after you add some new files, um, you can just go to build, clean all, and then build, run QMake, and just try to run it again, and many times this will fix it. There we go, it's fixed. Um, uh oh, where did that go? 
Okay, so it's fixed. Now I'm pressing the keyboard, but nothing is printing, which means that this rect is still not responding to key events. And the reason for that is because um, only one Qgraphics graphics item can respond to keyboard events at a time. And it can only be the focused item. So you can have many items inside of a scene, but only one of the items at one point can respond to queue events, and that is the focused item. So you have to do two things to make an item focused. First, you have to make the item focusable. You can do that by calling um, one of its methods. So we're going to call the set flag, and we're basically going to set a certain flag true, and that flag is queue graphics item. Um, item is focusable. So this line of code makes the rect focusable. Now it's not focused yet, so it's not the um, item that will receive keyboard events yet, but it has the ability to, um, if you allow it, if you set it to be the one. Um, so now we're going to do rect set focus, and this member function will actually say, hey rect, you are the focused item, so you will receive all of the keyboard events. Um, okay, so now let's run this again. Now that our rect is the focus, let's see if it responds. And there we go. As I press the keyboard keys, any key that I press, we see the text, my rect knows that you pressed the key. Um, but we don't want to um, just display that text. We actually want to have this move. So let's replace this text with um, the rectangle actually moving around. We don't need this library anymore. <clears throat> So before we move, we want to check what key was pressed. Remember that information about the event is stored inside this object. And the key that was pressed is one of that information that is stored in this object. So we're going to check what key was pressed. So if event key is equal to QT key left. So if the left key was event, we want to set the position of this object to its current x minus 10 because we're moving it to the left and we're going to keep its current y. Okay. Now we're going to do else if. So what if what if the right key was pressed instead of the left key? Well, we're just going to add 10 to the x axis instead of subtracting 10. Um, okay, and we're going to do similar things for the um, up and down keys. So if the up key was pressed, we don't want to change the x position, we just want to change the y position. Now if we want to move it up, we have to subtract from the y position. That's because um, the 0, 0 origin is at the top left corner of the screen, and this is the positive y x-axis, and this is the positive y-axis. So if you want to move up, you have to subtract from the y. And if you want to move down, then you have to add to the y. And there we go. So let's run this. Um, Q key. Okay, so undefined type Q key event. Okay, we did not include the header file, no problem. Q key event. And now let's rerun it, and this should work. Uh -oh. oh, it's already open. Now this should work. <clears throat> okay, there we go. Now let's resize this so we can see it move. As I press the up key, it moves up. When I press the down key, it moves down, left, and right. So it is responding to the key events. <clears throat> Um, now let's quickly go over the event propagate, propagation system, and I'm going to do that here. So basically when a keyboard event, or any event for that matter, happens, um, first the root widget, in this case the queue graphics view, will um, know about the event. But it will alert its scene. Remember that a view actually visualizes a certain scene, so it will tell its scene, hey, a key was pressed. The scene will go and search for its current focused item. That's why we made the MyRect focusable and we made it focused. So the scene will go and find the item that is focused and it will tell it, hey, a key was pressed. Now that item will then run its member function, its key press member function. 
key event. I think it's called key press event. And this member function um, basically defines how this um, myrect responds to the key being pressed. Um, and what we did was we checked what key was pressed by looking at the queue key event object. So we saw what key was pressed, we checked what key was pressed, and then we responded accordingly. Um, that's it for the uh, second tutorial. Um, I'm not sure if I was going too fast or if I was going too slow. So um, if you guys give me some feedback, I would really appreciate that. Thank you for watching, and um, I hope to see you in the next tutorial. Thank you.